So, good afternoon or very early evening. I never know where, where is the line between afternoon and evening. Uh, my name is Matej Zeppel. I am kind of unofficial lead of the Python uh, development in uh, SUSE. And this presentation has kind of tragic his, uh, history because originally when I was uh, plan uh, registering for the conference, I was working on the Python stack proposal for a couple of months already and it was exactly after eight hours brainstorming session where I was completely wiped out. And I, my first thought, never anything about Python. So let's talk about something else. So I thought I will install microOS and I will share with you my experience with running microOS on the, and how, uh, how is the real, real life with microOS. Then uh, uh, when I t told it to my boss, hi Sasha, uh, he told that I am completely crazy and that I have to talk about uh, Python stack proposal because it needs uh, more popularization presentation. So. In the end, this is kind of weird combination of two slightly unrelated uh, products, and I hope there will be a lot of questions and accusations and uh, blame and everything, so we, we, we can talk. So, let's talk about Python stack proposal. Uh, most of you who try to use Sleep know that uh, the only supported version of Python is Python 3.6, which is kind of tragically old, obsolete, and not supported by m many upstream projects. So the case which kind of hurts my heart is that Lubos was running around and asking whether we can include GNU Medical, or whatever is the name of the project, which is kind of awesome project for uh, medical infrastructure. A couple of African countries is built on it, and it's absolutely awesome. The best what can uh, open source universe provide. And it doesn't work on uh, Leap because uh, we have Python 3.6 only. And given our contractual obligations, we will have Python 3.6 as our main uh, Python for the rest of uh, life of uh, Python. So, it's kind of a situation without a resolution. So, we decided that we will add on the top of the current system also some restricted set of Python packages with uh, more recent versions. After some discussion, hi Dirk, uh, we decided that it, in the end it will be Python 3.11. Originally it was supposed to be Python 3.10, but uh, now it's Python 3.11. So TLDR uh, of Python stack proposal, yes, you have Python 3.11 and restricted, meaning a couple of hundred of packages uh, in SLE 15 SP4 and from that uh, in, I'm not sure which version of uh, Leap, ask somebody more Leapish. Um, we try to uh, collect from our customers and from whoever we could ask what is kind of set of packages which would allow them to run uh, their applications. So that's what, how we generated the list. Uh, it's again, given the nature of SLES, uh, we didn't touch anything which is in the current SLES. Uh, it's just on the top of it. It's the additional packages 
the original slash Python 36 packages will be as supported as they are uh, currently, and we will support these more modules. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure how the specific Python module will be reflected in the Leap universe, whether it will be additional repository or it will be in the same, uh, I'm not sure, but additional repository. Okay. And yeah, the last line I, I have added uh, that we do not guarantee, we will try to be as conservative as possible, but we do not guarantee that it will be uh, the same version 3.11 forever and ever and ever, and that the packages uh, which are there will be in the same version forever and ever and ever. Uh, if we will need some really burning need, we, we, will, uh, uh, we will upgrade. We will try to be sensible and conservative, but uh, we don't guarantee that it will be the same forever. Questions? This is uh, that eight hour uh, brainstorming session. <laughs> uh, the support cycles for the thing, it was crazy. Anyway, so are there any questions? Everything is easy, Everything, everybody is happy, or everybody is completely confused. Okay. And now about something completely different. Um, as I said originally, I was hoping that this will be mostly about uh, microOS and how microOS desktop works in the real life for the real developer and not for somebody who is whose main job is hacking microOS desktop. So uh, I have some knowledge about some parts of it, but not very uh, deep knowledge. And to make things even more fun, I decided to use uh, Richard Brown's image, uh, which is with Sway, so the main microOS desktop, or however it is called, ION, is it ION? Yes, uh, will be with GNOME, which uh, has, uh, I am using uh, Sway, which has um, some advantages, I like it very much, but I have to admit it's kind of by hackers for hackers, so uh, most of the configuration is done with uh, editing text files, which is perfectly fine, but uh, the nature of the micro OS when you want to have as little configuration as possible, it probably works better for GNOME and where everything is kind of aut automatically configured without uh, users' involvement, it works slightly better. So, for example, this is not my computer, because my computer I have just not persuaded to connect to HDMI. I have no idea. Um, but aside from that HDMI, my experience is that uh, the basic system upgrading image, that host operating system that is regularly updated, it, from my point of view, it just works. Every, uh, I have to keep computer uh, on overnight, and every morning I have fresh update uh, running, and everything is lovely. Uh, so that's uh, one thing. 
Of course, the basic applications which are supposed to be run on the micro OS should be run in FlatMax, which works perfectly well. I expect it to work absolutely perfectly on, uh, again, GNOME, because GNOME is built for this infrastructure. I had some slight uh, problems with integration because every flat packs is isolated container, but you need to have communications between those containers and with the uh, host operating system. So there is like very deep magic uh, involved, which works more or less correctly, but uh, sometimes there is some window which doesn't know where to go. But uh, that's probably, again, a sway problem. I think uh, my Firefox on the BART, these, uh, if you use the official flat packs for, from large uh, developers, then they just work. I was, uh, it's kind of interesting because it is first time in many, many years where I'm using actually Firefox from Mozilla and Thundenberg from whoever maintains Thundenberg currently, and LibreOffice. Um, I wonder whether it is the future and where is the end of our efforts. Uh, how long will be these applications will be maintained by um, ones like us, probably for a long time because of SUSE support, but I wonder. Um, and the best part for the developers, okay, so uh, when I talk with anybody about micro OS, they are uh, saying, oh, it doesn't work because you have to uh, uh, reboot after every uh, installation of every package and it's completely uh, useless. The answer is that uh, the answer are to you are not supposed to install many packages on the, on the host system and for anything else when you need normal system where you can uh, install the remove uh, play with it uh, uh, use a distrobox and I was su surprised how Distrobox really makes life with Docker Podman containers really simple and useful even from a guy like me who is not a super uh, specialist for in the uh, container world and who kind of doesn't know what he's talking about when talking about containers. But Distrobox really makes uh, the life very easy. So. Of course, I have one development uh, container with uh, Tumbleweed where I can uh, uh, basically do anything and it works just fine. For some reasons which I was not, nobody explained it to me correctly yet, uh, it needs to be run with uh, root privileges, but again, that's just one switch in uh, Distrobox, so it works just fine. I have to uh, use my password in, in the beginning because it runs through sudo. Um, yes, uh, there was supposed to be a de demo here, which is not because I'm not on my computer. So uh, I will just describe in uh, briefly. Containers are fun. Uh, so I managed. Uh, as I said, I still don't feel that I'm a super specialist in uh, containers, but I managed to uh, create my own compute, uh, container with a uh, text editor which I use, which includes also uh, all language service protocol servers, and it is able to export these servers from this container so inside of that development container, I can use them with uh, uh, Vim, so uh, uh, NeoVim. So NeoVim uses in one container, NeoVim running in one container uses language service from uh, other containers. 
it's fun. Yeah, and it, it's a really easy, it's just one shell script which I had to fix. And uh, you can do a lot of uh, interesting things with it. Um, and yes, uh, somebody mentioned these 728 tech life packages, which uh, I had to, uh, this presentation is made in uh, Beamer. So that's what I had to install. And comparing to the regular tumbleweed, I didn't have to uh, put it on my normal system, but I just created new container, inst um, create uh, presentation, then the uh, container will go away and everything is fine. Uh, sorry? I could. It seems kind of perverse, but yes, I could. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, I was talking about. Yeah, uh, yes, the the one thing which. I think she is kind of call to arms for all of us. If the future of operating system is supposed to be this kind of minimal host system with containers, and there are some people who claim that it should be, then I feel that our the situation with containers needs a huge... Um, user uh, m making them much more user friendly than they are because currently uh, flat packs work uh, just fine and uh, finding something on uh, flat hub is kind of reasonable but if you want uh, normal containers and i was told that i am not supposed to use normal containers directly i uh, i'm supposed to use kubernetes and a set of new containers, which is even more fun because it doesn't exist at all. But So if I would like to have for completely server-side uh, situation, some set of containers called, I don't know, small office uh, mail server, uh, I'm not sure whether I, I would be looking for it. If I am weird guy who runs uh, IMAP server and Postfix on his own uh, workstation, then I am even more lost because uh, if, we, if you go to the Docker Hub, you have those lovely 100,000 or so containers. And mm, if uh, there is not a particular package, uh, the container maintained by the upstream, then basically I have no idea how to do anything about it. Uh, situation is slightly better in uh, registryopensuse.org. That's probably my only hope to find something sane. But still, uh, amount of work to make it, uh, to configure everything and to make everything work is still um, too high, I'm afraid. Um, uh, but so I had to make a couple of them myself, but uh, I still think that it's too much. Okay, questions, accusations. What, what did I miss? What I don't understand? Either for microOS or uh, for uh, Python. No, it's too late. Everybody is sleeping and thinking about dinner. Okay. Thank you very much.